All right, good morning, Wasteland. Mr. G here, and today we're doing a special one. We're doing a lore video. Because if you've, you've ever played Crossout, you've probably wondered to yourself, what does the word Crossout even mean? What's the lore or the story behind this game? Well, Crossout is essentially an alternate history world. Let's go ahead and take a look at where that world comes from. This is all coming right from the website. It's been translated from Russian into English. Let's get to it. In 2027, oh, just a few years away, a mysterious viral epidemic. Great, that's sounding way too much like real life. Known as the Crossout. I'm sure there's something lost in translation there. I bet it sounds way cooler in Russian. Swept the planet. Countries and populations simultaneously begin to fall at an alarming rate all over the earth. Those who did not die in the first few days were plagued by hallucinations and headaches. Many people went mad and committed suicide. The source of the disease could not be detected, but the cities were once a vibrant social economic beacons of humanity were left ravaged and deserted. The media speculated on several possibilities concerning the nature of the disease. Some argued that radiation of cell phones and televisions was infected. Oh, sounds like people freaking out that 5G is killing us all and a new synthetically engineered virus created by terrorists. I'm sorry, this sounds way too much like actual, real-life present. Others thought a virus that corrupted the atmosphere. Oh, okay, yeah, this is sounding very much like the present. Following an impact of a large meteorite. Okay, that less so. Was this an evolutionary leap and the dawn of a new humanity? So, we have to go back in time to 2011. UFO crashes within Near East Combat Zone. According to information from our sources, the testing of a new anti-air system based on technology developed in the closed U.S. Air Force facility led to unexpected results. An unknown flying object was detected, attacked, and shot down. So many tried to escape the effects of the virus by using different protective measures. They wore face masks to filter the air and completely stopped using electronic devices in favor of a more traditional means of communication. Okay, that's why we have radio, I guess. But it was all in vain. In just a few days, what was once an epidemic became a pandemic, unlike any other the world had ever seen. Okay, we have another diary fragment. The evacuation is a failure. Everyone's panicking. There's no power. There's no water. The soldiers, they couldn't care less. Most of them just ran off. Today, I saw the bottom of the ocean from my window. Something's happened to the water. The ocean has pulled all the way back to the horizon. I don't know what to do. Could this really be the end? Now survivors gradually begin to change. After 15 years of transformation, the changes became visible, noticeable. Metamorphosis occurred in the eyes of the affected. Some begin to glow while others resembled black holes. To hide their unnatural looks and conceal the mutation, people started wearing padded clothing and sunglasses. More than 20 years have passed since cross out. Humans still remember their life before the disaster and as always there are groups trying to recover the old world while others enjoy the chaos and destruction. But there are also those who are not human anymore. They hide their faces behind masks and their motives are unknown. Not everyone in this world strives for chaos and destruction. There are also people who want to preserve our knowledge of the past and the scouts from the Order of the Fallen Star are such people. These excellently armed and mobile solo soldiers have dedicated their lives to searching for artifacts, carriers of information of all kind. No one knows where the starbirds take the artifacts they find or why, but the curious Scar AB will pay more decent money for any containers bearing the logo. New pieces are added to his artifact collection on a regular basis. The wastelands hide danger for even the most battle-hardened veterans. After all, Scar AB is afraid that one day the Order will come for their artifacts so his collection remains hidden. But on special occasions, he puts up several well-protected exhibits for the public viewing. All right, to give you guys a little bit more of the history, that was just kind of a big excerpt. The alternate history begins in 1969. It runs to 2051. In 1969, we have the founding of the Water Cavern, a corporation founded in 1969, two months after the landing of American astronauts on the moon. It's officially considered to be nothing but a mere coincidence. 1992, Scar A.B. was born on April 19th. He traveled around the world a lot. They say he already had a soft spot for collecting things back then. He reached a prominent position among the scavengers and lost his leg along the way. 
Jump ahead 1995, Eric Stahl, the Steppenwolf guy, was born on November 10th, 1995. He always served his homeland as long as he can remember, and when the world collapsed, he remained a soldier. Along with several senior officers, he continued to serve the temporary government and organize his elite squad, which they had to reckon with, the Steppenwolves. 2010, Odigan. She is the Firestarter's main hero was born, presumably in 2010, to survive in the new world to protect and feed herself after the disaster. The actress reincarnated as a witch. 2011, testing of a new Air Force defense system developed by the U.S. Air Force led to accidentally shooting down a UFO. This is a Don's children nod. 2012, the saucer was unlocked. Some devices were transported to secret labs, including Water Cavarn. Some of them also appeared on the black market. The Sinto Corporation, the water con's main rival, made the most profit from it. Totally getting Don's children here. 2013, Psycho Pete, everyone's favorite lunatic, was born after the disaster. He enjoyed complete freedom and impunity for many years, sparring with neither strangers nor his own. Somehow he became the leader of a small gang. 2014, the first Ravager. In attempts to achieve human immortality, the Water Cavarn creates the first module designed to transfer human conscious out of the body. It's called Ravager. First lost people appear. 2015, Water Kavarn internal report. The area around the downed object is changing. The decomposition of all matter is accelerated. The staff is experiencing anxiety and panic attacks. 2019, Riley. A man known as Riley was born on August 20, 2019. It's the Don's children leader. 2025, Augustus Donner was born. 2026, Ivy XL was born on August 15, 2026. She quickly became the leader of the engineers, and like her father, Ivy wants to make the world better, but in her way. 2027, Crossouts. The death of billions. Most of the survivors are going crazy. Chaos is everywhere. Some governments and large corporations were more prepared for the crisis but it did not pass them by as well. 2027, nuclear strikes. In an atmosphere of overwhelming chaos, some governments decide to retaliate the attack and launch nukes at the supposed enemy. Nuclear blasts make the situation even worse. Fertile lands are turned into a wastelands. 2027 to 2029, evacuation of cities, unsuccessful attempts to restore the work of governments. 2027, the lunatics. Earth descends into anarchy, decentralized society where the strong rule supreme. They are called the lunatics and their gangs quickly spread around waste territory left without protection. 2028, water Kavarn dissolves. The corporate breaks apart and only separate branches, which are disconnected from each other, are left. The biggest one is then reorganized into the Dawn's Children faction. 2030, Martin was born. Later under the White Cross, he will assemble a host of formidable drivers of perfect cars. Knights of the White Cross, or the Knight Riders. 2030, the first wave of death and insanity ceased, leaving the Earth significantly altered. Geography, weather, fauna, and disaster touched everything. People begin to adapt slowly to survive without communication, governments, and order. 2031, Neon Dragon. The remainders of the Sinto Corporation reorganized themselves into the Neon Dragon Syndicate. Cybernetic implants help them compensate for damages caused by crossout. 2032, engineers, a group of survivors headed by a man known as Mentor, bumps into the Water Kavarn's old industrial complex. After the crossout, it's been governed by Ava Lindholm, Mentor, which manages to find common ground with her, and a new great power is born into the wasteland, the engineers faction. The small circle of its captains is known as Founders. 2033 to 2035, Engineers Expansion. With reliance upon military and technical superiority, the Engineers assert dominance over a huge span of land that Europe once was. Faction goal is to build a perfect world at any cost. Merciless violence begins aimed at lunatic games, defectives like the Nomads, and any other survivors who refuse to obey the new order. 2036, The Brotherhood. A number of Eastern Europe's military organizations managed to overcome the crossout establish connections with one another to form a provincial government. Their first common goal is to oppose the engineer's expansion that is ever-growing threat. The alliance is known as the Brotherhood. 
2036, Kaganet. In Western Europe, a Firestarter's war chief known as Khan starts to unite the scattered lunatics gangs. Thus, the Cognigate is formed. The authority there is built upon the crazy raider's belief in the mystic powers of the Khan and his shamans. And fear, of course. And since the alternative to the Cognate is an inevitable death on the mentors of his engineer's hands, numerous lunatic gangs quickly become part of it. 2040 to 2043 war against engineers, conflict between engineers and the Brotherhood turns into an all-out war. Taking advantage of the situation, the Cognate attacks the former, the war is fought back and forth for several years. Everything changes once the Nomads join the war, whose armored cars come from seemingly lifeless wastelands and attack the engineers. The united force of three factions gradually pushes Mentor towards his HQ. 2042, the valley is open, the territory of the valley is freed from the influence of some powerful anomaly. Now it has become habitable. 2043, fall of engineers. At their peak, the engineers were a very militant, inventive group, which made much noise. But only by joint efforts of several factions, their headquarters was utterly destroyed, along with their projects and equipment. Mentor disappears. Most of the remaining engineers have united around Ivy XO, and the rest followed the founders. Coming to the valley, Ivy XO leads her group of engineers to the valley. They were the first to discover that it was possible to live there after the deadly radiation disappeared. Many of them settled in these unoccupied territories. The Cognate and Brotherhood start filling the power vacuum of Engineers' former territories. Relations quickly become heated as both factions see a threat in the other. Scar AB Lunatics At the end of the year, a lunatic squad headed by Scar AB discovers the path of the valley. While scouting the terrain, they're attacked by nomads and pushed out. Scar AB, being the only survivor, returns to Cognit. There, he enters a conflict with the Khan of his failure, loses a limb. Flees east to the lands of the Brotherhood. This is 2044. Settlement of the Valley. In return for the formation of the Khan, the Cognit Valley, Scar AB gets a squad of non-military Brotherhood loyalists at his disposal. They're then called the Scavengers. They gather useful parts and materials from any fitting source. Scar AB leads the squad to the valley around the same time. Khan sends several gangs under Psycho Pete, there with the intention to secure territory. 2045. 2046, First Valley Survivors. The first survivors arrive in the valley. The Nect, or the Night Riders, are formed and set out on their first march. 2047, based on the info gained from Scar AB, Brotherhood decides to send a special forces team under Major Stahl called the Steppenwolves to the valley. Don's children also arrive there in order to conduct research Second Night Crusade. 2047, a conflict breaks the Don's children ranks. A scientist named Lloyd leaves after sabotaging them in a couple of months. The first vehicles with no drivers are spotted in the valley. The so-called Ravagers are activated. 2048, the Firestarter squad under Supreme Shaman Odegan arrived to the valley. Khan intends to spread his influence to the whole of it, the Third Night Crusade. 2048, the first Steel Championship. 2049, Ravager activity increases. People who lost their memory after encountering them are first seen in the valley. Engineers react first and start their investigation. The Syndicate visits the valley for the first time. Their scouting ends with disaster after clashing with a squad of Ravagers. 2050, Second Steel Championship, Fourth Night Crusade. 2050, okay, more Steel Championship, Fifth Night Riders. Um, but during which they're fully destroyed by the Ravens. 2050, with the help of free survivors, engineers destroy a large Ravagers factory. Lloyd manages to flee the scene with their technology. Tons of parts from Ravagers are destroyed. Vehicles flood the wasteland. Caligari's Circus arrives to the valley bringing various devices based on the Ravager's technology, the Neon Dragon Syndicate finds out about this and prepares a large incursion. 2051, the Syndicate arrives in the valley. The reason behind that is Ravager's technology is spreading across the local population. Following initial recon, they seek to meet the engineers who cooperated with Neon Dragon some time ago with an intention to get information about the Ravager's and Lloyd from them. That meeting goes tensely. Gained information leads the squad to the Clean Island, where they bump into Caligari. Having lost him, Syndicate still gets coordinates of one of Lloyd's secret labs into the Ravager's foothold. That's 2051. 
more steel championships in 2051 and that is our last date fourth steel championship i don't think we really need these steel championship dates but at least it gives you an idea about kind of some of the mess of lore behind this game but if you want to know the real inspiration for this game check out my video on x machina which is kind of the inspiration for cross out it's an old but gold game and video and i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did or you have something you'd like to add, let me know in the comments and hit that like button. I hope to catch you on the next one. Mr. G out.